What's up, everybody? Happy Tuesday. Hope all you're having a great day so far. Hope you all had a great 4th of July weekend. Great 4th. Um, getting into this episode of GH, let me just be the first to say this. Um, how do I put this? I think I'm just going to flat out say it. Drew is a fucking idiot. <laughs> Every time I want to give Drew the benefit of the doubt, I can't. He, he's, he's not, and this is just my opinion. This is all just my opinion. I just feel like he's not a very astute businessman. He's not. He's not a very wise business person. I, I just think he needs to sell Aurora Media at this point. He's not smart. Whatever stock he owns in Aurora Media, sell it. He, he's not a smart businessman. He goes to Nina. With this business proposition. He's willing to sell her. Crimson. 100% of Crimson. He's willing to sell her. Um, but he needs to move quickly on this. So. Olivia comes up to talk to him. Like she bumps in. Well she bumps into him or whatever. And you know she basically make it plain. Like she knows about Carly's situation. With the Metro Court and stuff like that. And mind you Nina overhears this conversation. So now Nina knows what's going on that carly basically sold her half of the hotel and stuff she owns stock in aurora media and this is why drew wants to sell uh crimson to her so she overhears all of this and now she's starting to put the pieces together as to why drew wants to sell uh crimson to her so he was like oh because i figured that you would reject the offer if i told you the truth Duh, Nina is not the type to save Carly. And in this point, if she did, you know, give, you know, buy Crimson, it would basically be saving Carly's ass. You know, it would offload and give a lot of money to Aurora. So that way Carly could use it to buy back her share. You know, basically the stock can go back up, makes, you know, the stock market, it'll help or whatever. She'll make some more money, whatever. My thing was that that was a stupid it was a stupid proposition. I'm going to tell you why. One, you went to Nina of all people. Somebody who Carly hates. Two, it's been stated numerous times that Crimson is such a huge asset to Aurora Media. They make good money off of it. So you're going to sell it just to save Carly and that's supposed to because Drew claims, "Oh, I want to reassure the investors." How the hell is that reassuring the investors? The investors are already skittish because you lost out on a merger that could have been okay. I still feel like the merger would have been dumb, but, you know, they were looking forward to that merger. That could have made them a lot of money, maybe. Um, That failed. And now you're talking about selling a top division, a top moneymaker? If I was an investor of Aurora, I wouldn't be an investor anymore. Because none of this sounds reassuring to me. Why would you sell a top money maker? What other divisions do you have that make as much money as Crimson makes you? Because they've said it numerous times. Hell, even when Billy Miller was playing Drew, even he said that's why he didn't want to fire Nina. Because she makes money. And I'm assuming when Michael pretty much was running things, well, the digital d division, he, he didn't push for Nina to get fired. Because she makes them money. Many people may not like Nina, but I will say she knows what she's doing at Crimson. Thanks. I, I have to put that out there. Thanks to Maxie, of course. But um, because Maxie taught that woman everything she knows. But that's stupid. That's that, that, that was just a dumbass business move. I'm sorry. That was that was just dumb. That's not something I, I could have seen coming. Like, why would you do that? Why, Drew? Why? that i don't see nina taking that deal i mean it would definitely benefit nina don't get me wrong nina already has pretty much full autonomy at crimson even back when julian was running things at Derek wells media she pretty much had full autonomy like she runs the the magazine how she wants to run it with no interference the only thing is she didn't have control over the budget at least this way she's not going to be an employee anymore she's going to be an employee slash owner Plus, she'll have full control, like she'll control the budget, all of that. So it be it's beneficial to her to buy it.
And plus, she'll have bragging rights. Like, she could pretty much just put it out there like, I saved Carly's ass, pretty much. But I felt like that was just dumb of Drew. Like, I, I, I have no confidence in Drew as a businessman. I just feel like I would not invest in anything that Drew does. I would not let him own a hot dog stand. Like, he, he just hasn't made very smart business decisions as of late. That I agree with. This is just my opinion. Y'all might see it different. I just see it as just, no. Mm-mm. Hell no. So now Nina probably going to run her mouth to Sonny about it. When he came to see her, she probably going to open up her big mouth. Because Carly wasn't trying to talk to Sonny at all. Like, Sonny was coming up saying, oh, you seem like you're in a bad mood or you got bad news. Carly pretty much let him know, like, listen, we have nothing to talk about. We're divorced. Our only connection is Donna. Keep it pushing. I feel like this breakup between Sonny and Carly, in my opinion, is so different than the other breakups. Because usually they'll be mad at each other for a little hot second. But they got over it relatively fast. And they went back to being friends and talking and being around each other. Now, it's like Carly just don't want to be in the same space with him. She ain't got no words for him. Just nothing. Zilch. Nada. Like, just nothing. I don't remember them being like that when they broke up before. Like like I said, for a hot second, they'd be mad at each other. But usually they got over it pretty quickly. But now it just seems very final. Like, yo, get out my face. <laughs> like, like, she has no words for him. But you can tell Sonny still care about Carly. You know what I'm saying? That that doesn't go away. And I think on some level she still care about him too. But, I, you know, it might take a little while longer for them to get back to a decent, you know, decent place. Um... So anyway, moving on from that, I cannot believe they don't age Rocco up. I, I was seeing this new actor playing Rocco. I said, damn, Rocco a teenager now? Because <laughs> he Rocco look like he about, what, a preteen or a teen, like beginning teens, maybe 13, 12, somewhere around there. I said, OK, I see they don't age the boy up again. I want to know what's the status of them bringing Lulu back. That's what I want to know. Like, what's good with that? You know, like I didn't understand why they took her off in the first place. I guess, I don't know. Backstage politics, I guess. Who knows? Um, but, you know, it'd be good to see Lulu, Leslie Lou pop up again at some point. Um, Cody, he's starting to work my nerve. Um, I was trying to like this character. I, I had high hopes that he was going to be, you know, a character I could like. So far, I don't know. He's just not hitting for me <laughs> like I thought he would. He just not because he messing with my boy Spinelli and I don't like that. But um, you know he seen Spinelli or whatever. He still and you know Spinelli not here for it. Spinelli said, "Listen, you ain't about to extort me. I'm not with all that." He said, "Oh, I'm just here for a business opportunity." No, you trying to extort him is what you're trying to do, sir. We we see your game. So when Sonny came over and stuff, it was so funny how Spinelli dropped Sonny's name. He was like, "Oh, this is my dear friend Sonny Corinthos," and. Cody whispered to him when he hugged Spinelli. He said, well played. He said, that's a nice game you just played. And even Sonny peeped it. Sonny peeped that. He said, so what He said, so what, what trouble are you in with this Cody Bell? He said, what, what are you into? He said, oh, I'm not in trouble. He said, yeah, you are. Because why you just drop my name like that? I love how Sonny picked up on that. I loved it. Because I'm like, any, anybody with some sense could pick up on that. My dear friend, Sonny Corinthos, like he emphasized it. So Sonny knew right there, like, why you dropping my name like that? <laughs> Sonny knew what time it was. He was like, what, what trouble are you into? He said, listen, when you ready to talk and ready to tell me what's going on, let me know. Because Sonny knew something was up with Spinelli and Cody. He, he figured that. He was very suspicious of that, especially, like I said, especially the way he dropped Sonny's name. Like, you know, you keep messing with me. I got my dog right here. I got Sonny right here. Like, he can handle you. That's pretty much how he did that. And I liked it. I said, there you go, Spinelli. Let Cody know that you got friends in high places or in the underworld for that matter, and you can have his ass erased anytime you feel like it. Um, cause Olivia came along or whatever, and she had offered um Cody a job at the quarter main stables and stuff, and now he's contemplating taking the job if it comes with room and board. Listen, keep him away from the cues, cause I don't trust him. He look like he's still silverware and <laughs> I just hope he's not in the main house. Like, do not. I just hope Michael and Monica and on him do not let that boy in their house because he look like he's still. Like, I'm just saying. Like, you you just wake up in the middle of the night, all your good shit is gone. Keep eyes on him. 
keep tabs. I'm just saying. You, your good furniture will be gone. I want to know what's good with Spinelli and his social society business or whatever. Social hookups, whatever he call it. Um, Because he talking about he on his third date and whatnot. And, you know, Britt pretty much wrote the shit off. She was like, listen, I ain't got time for this. But, you know, Zelda called her or whatever with some more, you know, candidates and whatnot. And she was like, all right. She said, I'm going to try it one more time. I mean, if I was Britt, I would get my money's worth. Because at the end of the day, Zelda is giving her some free, you know, a few months free of using the service. So I'll take advantage of it. Even if they are done. Shit, go out, get you a free meal. <laughs> I'm just saying. Get you a free little dinner or whatever, even if it is whack. You know, you might come across somebody that's, you know, good looking and y'all might want to do the do. So go ahead and do it, you know? Knock them cobwebs out a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Because I know it's been a little cobwebby down there for a few months now since Jason been going. So, you know, knock the dust out that thing and keep it pushing. But I'll get my money's worth. I'll get me some freebie. I'm just saying. And Dante better be careful of Mr. Cody. Like, don't be letting him around your child. I'm just saying. Um. So anyway, all that shit that happened at the pool was a hot mess. You know, Cameron and Spencer, part of their plan actually worked for once. Um, because they're trying to get Jocelyn and Carly's DNA. So when Carly was at the pool and stuff, you know, she was over at the bar sipping her wine. Cameron was smart. He came over and told Carly that she had something on her teeth. Like she had lipstick in her teeth. So she wiped it or whatever. And then Spencer started this little stupid argument with Jocelyn, calling her the porno queen or poor Charles or something mess. And they got into it. So all I know is a bunch of people went into the pool. <laughs> Spencer got pushed into the pool. Esme done pushed Jocelyn into the pool. Trina done pushed Esme ass into the pool. If I was Trina, I would have pushed that girl in the pool and kept her head down. I'm just saying. Little, little, little drizzle. So in the midst of all the craziness, Cameron was able to get Carly's napkin and Esme, I guess, done pulled out some of um, Jocelyn here or whatnot. So Spencer ended up getting here for the DNA. Carly done brought her ass over there pretty much and told them to get lost. She was like, listen, I'm banning y'all from the pool. Get out of my pool. Get out my hotel. I'm like, if only these kids knew. Carly, boo, you don't own that hotel no more. You don't co own no more, sweetie pop, honey bunch. It ain't yours. <laughs> I bet you if Spencer and them knew the truth, I bet you they asses wouldn't have went nowhere because she ain't got no power no more. <laughs> she can't kick y'all out of nothing. Um, she ain't got no power or no deed no more, so she can't kick y'all out. Um, so Jocelyn was wondering what was going on with Carly because she was like, you've been a little testy lately. <laughs> I'm like, uh, yeah, if you only knew why. So part of their little stupid plan worked or whatever. So they got the DNA that they needed and caused all this mischief. Um, so anyway, moving on from that, um, BLQ and Chase done hit another stumbling block in their relationship because she told me, oh, your life is about to change. And Chase was like, I don't, I don't need my life to change. I need my job back. That's what I need. So she came up with this idea to have him start being a singer. And she was like, oh, I want you to be a mystery. You ain't got to go on stage and sing. But then she was like, once Link hear you sing, he going to want to sign you and stuff like that. And we're going to blackmail him to get my songs back. Chase said, hold up, hold up. He said, so pretty much he is on the verge of losing his job. He's trying to figure his life out. And your plan to help him is to help yourself, basically. Chase was pissed. He stormed out because he felt like that was so selfish of her. Like he put his job on the line for her did x y and z for her and this is your plan to continue to help yourself when he's going through this shit right now i get why he's upset but i totally understand why he's upset with her because that is a bit selfish on her part i mean why are you still getting him mixed up with this link business but chase he did this to himself though you know i can't i can't discount that like he really did this to himself like you're the one who Put your hands on that man. You know what I'm saying? He didn't physically provoke you, and yet you hit him. You know, you the one that got yourself involved in BLQ shenanigans. Like I said, I really don't see how their relationship is going to move forward. Because he's a cop. That's what he likes being. That's what he likes doing. And it's like every time they move forward, they take about four steps back. So they're going to have to really figure this mess out now. Because I don't see a future for them if it continues in this direction. So anyway, Maxie, Lucy, and Sasha had to deal with the uh, Heart and Home segment today, that t that talk show. 
Mabu Haven, played by um Morgan Fairchild, the legendary Morgan Fairchild. She looked good for her age, too. Let me just say, Morgan looks amazing. Um, I was loving this segment, though, because Lucy definitely could tell something was off with Sasha. And she told Maxie, she said, listen, something ain't right with her. Um, and that little druggy paparazzi was coming up in there, you know, being a little leech that he is. And Brando popped up or whatever to show some support. Sasha was just on pins and needles um, trying to deal with this. Like, once they got into the whole, like, segment and stuff like that, she started freezing up. Like, she was freezing. And thank God for Gladys. I never thought I would say that, but thank God for her. Gladys called in, and she got um, Sasha to pretty much loosen up. And start selling the products. And after Gladys called in, Sasha started, you know, just letting it flow. And she started getting into the swing of things. I said, thank God. Because she was stinking up the joint. Like, she was sitting there freezing and stuff like that. Like, she done saw the candy man. I'm like, Sasha, I need you. I, get, get it together. You're on TV. <laughs> get it together. <laughs> You're going to have to snap out of this. Come on now. You got folks watching. And Deception is counting on this. So, you come on now. So then they had this lady, some top seller or whatever, Flora. She was coming up or whatever with some products and whatnot. And Maxie was checking out the products. And Maxie had warned Lucy. She said, yeah, we got a problem with these. <laughs> um, That whole her, uh, heart and home segment was a hot mess. But I enjoyed that segment. It, it was a messy. Um, a big bowl of mess. Like everything was just not going according to plan. But that's what makes it for great TV, though. You know, everything was just all over the place um so anyway that was pretty much the whole episode um hit the comment section let me know what y'all thought about it and i will see you all later have a great night peace